next thing we're going to do is when we click the start button we want uh, the game to start the game is controlled the game action is actually controlled by this timer think of the timer as the game engine and whenever the timer ticks which happens about uh, every tenth of a second every time it clicks then everything in the screen will update and this constant updating of the image on the screen um, as we move it across the screen will give us the appearance of animation and so the timer is our game engine so when we click the start button we want the, going, the game engine to turn on and when we click the stop button we want the game engine or the timer to turn off so we're going to program that first let's go ahead and click on double click the start button which as we know will bring us into code view here in um, the code view of our form and as uh, because I double clicked on that first button called button one I'm now inside the uh, method for controlling that I'm gonna go down hit enter go down one and I just simply need to write uh, one line of code here that will get the timer to start running when I click that button so all I have to do is say this which actually refers to this form it refers to the form and everything in it and then I refer to timer one which is in the form and then I refer to its start prop or start method. Okay, and I put a set of parentheses after that and a semicolon. Now you have to be certain that you're I'm using case sensitive names here. Timer one is called timer one exactly like that. If I go back to the form one designer, look down here, you can see it's a lowercase t timer one with no spaces. So I have to refer to it exactly the way it's written and we um, see how that's written there okay now when I click that button the timer will start will start excuse me let's go back to the form and double click on the stop button when uh, we can see now I've added a second method for the stop button I'm going to come here and hit the enter hit enter and type this timer one stop okay so now I've got a stop and a start button programmed alright let's go back to our design view one little uh, other thing we want to do is program the exit button here so let's double click on the exit button and make a method for controlling the exit button and as you know what we've done before I click here and just come in and write close with an opening and closing parentheses and a semicolon oops almost forgot my semi semicolon up here gotta add that as well every line of code uh, every command like that needs to end with a semicolon alright so I've got my game kind of set up but nothing really is happening yet if I run the game um, nothing will really appear to change in the game what we need to do now is go inside uh, another method that is um, called every time the timer uh, ticks so every one tenth of a second as we've put here the timer will tick and every time it ticks it's going to make some changes to the game so let's double click on the timer object which will create yet another method inside our program so I now have timer one underscore tick so every time the timer ticks okay every tenth of a second everything inside this method will be executed so what we're gonna do now this is the heart of the program I'm going to refer to this again which is the form and inside that form there's an object called ball remember that's what we call the picture box and that ball has a left property okay there's um, uh, this is just uh, the left side of the picture of the ball and what we want to do is say that left side of the ball we want it to um, move by a certain amount okay so we're just going to say plus equals two semicolon and then we also want this ball its top side okay to also move by two every time the timer ticks so let's just go ahead and save this matter of fact we might want to go ahead and go file save all okay and then we're going to go ahead and debug it okay the program's open we see we have all the objects on the form as we created them in the start and stop button. When I click start, the timer should start. Aha, uh -huh, pretty cool. Let's see, the ball went right off the edge of the form there, but we can see when I click stop, it stops. Start, stop. 
Okay, so that is working perfectly. Let's go ahead and hit the exit button. All right, but as we see, now when the ball gets to the uh, edge of the form, it just keeps on going and goes off into outer space. We would like, uh, as we've uh, as we've said earlier, we want the ball to bounce off all the sides of the form. How are we going to make that happen? Well, first of all, we need to do something other than hard coding in the number two here for the movement um, of the ball. We need to create a variable, and that variable will control the movement of the ball. We're going to create a variable called um, xMove that controls the movement of the ball on the x-axis to the right or the left, and another variable called y move. This controls the movement of the ball on the y axis, which is up and down. So you can see for top, the top side of the ball, we move it on the y axis, and the left side of the ball, we move it on the x axis. However, these two variables don't exist. We can't really declare them here inside the timer, um, so what we need to do instead is declare them way up at the top of our program. So go way to the top of your code view. You see namespace, bouncing ball, and then a series of namespace statements right at the bottom of those statements after namespace drawing, go ahead and just declare two variables. We're going to declare them as integers and we're going to call them uh, x move and we're going to give it the initial value of 2. Remember that's what we used before. And we'll declare another integer called y move and give it the initial value of 2. Okay, there you go. Now if we come down here, all we've done is substitute x move and y move uh, that used to be the numbers 2 now we've just uh, set, substituted these variables for that same value. Alrighty. Now all we can, all we have to do down here is use a series of if statements. We can do something like this. We can say if this ball, its uh, right side, for example, it has a right, left, top, and bottom. If its right side uh, is say greater than, hmm, how big is the form? Let's take a look at this particular um, form here. If I come down and select the form and look for its size, we'll see that this form is 300 by 300. Uh, I think I'll make it just a little bigger than that. 400 comma 300. Okay. So I can I now know that the form is uh, 400 pixels wide and it is uh, 300 pixels tall. So let's go back to our code. I can now say that if the right side of the ball is greater than, oh, let's go like 380, a little less than that 400. If that's true, what do we want to have do? Well, what we want to do is we want to take our x move value and we want to give it a negative value. So no longer is it moving in the positive direction to the right, but it'll actually start moving back towards the left. Okay, and then let's make another if statement here and simply say if parentheses this ball how about now we use the bottom if it is greater than let's see the height of the ball of the form was about 300 so we'll say 280 so put parentheses close those uh, put a set of curly braces and inside the curly braces we'll put our statement. Instead though, since we're talking about the up and down motion, we're going to use the y move. y move should be equal to negative y move. So we're just negating whatever the value of y move is, which we know is 2. So f uh, we take 2 and make it a negative 2 and we'll make 2 for the y move a negative 2. So now the ball will no longer move um, in a positive direction but a negative direction. Let's just take a look at what that will do. Let's go File, Save All, Build and Debug. Okay, Start. Well, what do you know? Let's run that again. Okay, let's watch that one more time. Start the program and it starts to move towards the lower right. That's because both on the x-axis and the y-axis we're moving in a positive direction. Um, positive on the x is always towards the right and positive on the y is always towards the bottom. Okay, But as soon as I hit start here again, as soon as the ball reaches the um, edge of the form, which is essentially 380 on the right and 280 on the bottom, it should reverse direction. 
sure enough, we see that when it got to that point, it turned around and went back up. Now it's moving in a negative direction on the x-axis, up, and it's moving in a negative direction on the y-axis towards the left. Now watch what happens. Hmm, the ball just continues to go up into outer space towards the upper left and doesn't come back. Well, why would that be so? Let's go back and take a look at the code. We see here that we gave the code, uh, we wrote the code for telling the ball uh, to, to turn around if it hits the right side and the bottom side. Um, however, we haven't done anything about um, controlling the ball if it moves up towards the left um, or top part of the screen. So your challenge for the rest of this assignment is to finish this code here so that the ball will successfully bounce off all four walls of your program um, and, and thus becoming um, a continual uh, program that bounces around inside the form. Okay, hope that makes sense. Give it your best try and I look forward to seeing what you turn in.